Today I want to do another one of my information videos. Um, this is a pretty simple one about a topic that I think is a fair bit misunderstood. Most tutors who shoot a lot not very well um, and some people who have trained properly not very well. Um, a lot of people don't know it very well. What am I talking about? I'm talking about um, shooting angle slope or your cosine, basically shooting uphill or shooting downhill um, in, in reference to um, shooting flat. Now, the most common place I hear it is shooting at extreme long range and because you're shooting from the top of a hill or shoot because you're shooting downhill, it's going to make it easier for the bullet to get there. And that's the most common place I hear it. Um, it must be downhill or that must have been from the top of a hill because it wouldn't make it there otherwise or something along those lines. A couple of deals, and I've done a video previously about extreme long range, really in extreme long range, shooting uphill or downhill is not relevant. It doesn't actually change anything at all. The main reason for that is once you're shooting at extreme long range, even if you've got lots, even if you've got 400, 500 meters of elevation over a shot that is 3000 meters long, there's not really enough in that. It'll make a slight difference, but not as much as the conditions will make. Once you go into actual real differences in a thousand meters in difference of height and things like that, then yes, that's going to change things, which will make more sense in, in a little while. But in actual fact, the change in different barometric pressures over that is going to make more difference than the, than the angle of the shot. The simple deal of this, and I suppose this comes much more into close range shooting, where shooting up and downhill does make a big difference, and that's about the angle of the shot. So it's going to start to make sense shortly. The simple thing with how gravity affects a bullet or something that is traveling through the air and not flying but traveling through the air always under the force of gravity if you simply understand that the more horizontal distance something travels that is what that is where it gets affected more by gravity the less horizontal distance the less effect by gravity that's the simple thing of something traveling through the air not flying like i said this is traveling always being affected but it's the horizontal distance which is what causes the effect what we see in shooting is that when you shoot out over, if you take a, uh, your, your shot from point A to, to point B being the, the target, the shooter, the target, that travel there, that, that, is, that distance there is how much the gravity uh, is where gravity affects it. So when a shot is, when a, when a bullet comes out of the barrel, it's constantly being pulled down to earth by the gravity. The longer it travels and the slower it goes, the more it pulled down. It always pulled down at the same speed, but as the bullet slows down, it gets affected more as it's actually traveling. So that's the basics. We all know that. That's why we adjust our shots as we shoot longer ranges. We put more, lift the nose of the barrel up to allow for how much it's going to fall down as the target. Now, when you take a shot that was dead flat, um, if you then move it up by X amount, you'll see, you'll notice that if we draw an arc on here and actually do this with images, um, as you have an arc that comes up or down, the, for the first bit, up to around the five degrees, there's really no difference you can see between the shot when it was flat and the shot where it was raised or it was lower than, so the target was higher or lower. As you go out to the 10 and 15 degrees, you start to see a difference in the level of the shot. You come to 25 degrees, you've definitely got a difference. And that's, that's the big thing we're talking about. That difference there, that, that horizontal travel is what the actual amount of fall, drop we're going to see because of the time or the distance it's traveled in a horizontal level. If you come right back to 45 degrees, you see we've also got a monstrous difference. And once you go into beyond 45 degrees, so starting to shoot more vertical or in, in either direction, up or down, you see that changes our shot monstrously. Now to work this shot out, when you're trying to figure it out, you can use cosines, you can use ballistics apps, there is algorithms and, and formulas to, or equations to be able to work that stuff out. But as I said, in truth, for extreme long range and even long range, it's unlikely you're going to be shooting at those angles. Now for guys that are living in mountainous regions and really have 500 yard shots that are 500 yards down, so a 45 degree shot, it's important for you guys to work it out. Now this video is actually coming back into the far simpler side of things. It got a little bit complicated trying to get through that, but a far simpler side of things. 
Okay, so the, the simple bit of this that we're talking about is that you actually use your horizontal distance to work out your shot placement. So to work out your elevation, whether it's holdover in a hunting reticle or it's um, dialing on, but your elevation needed for the shot you do with your horizontal distance. So if it's the close stuff and you can and you're shooting from a ledge down 30 meters, but you can see you're only actually five paces or five yards away from your target in a horizontal position, um, that's shooting up into a tree. Be careful if you're shooting up in a tree. You've got 30 meters up in the air, but that that position of where that bird is is only five yards away or 10 yards away from you, that is the holdover you're gonna use in that situation. If you are shooting at 600 yards, 800 yards, you're in mountain country, that type of thing, where you really do have a 200, 300, 400 meter drop as well, or yard drop as well, then to get your elevation point, to get your what you're gonna need in the way of elevation for that shot, you can actually, well, you, there's a couple of ways to do it. If you are laser range finding with a simple laser range finder, some of them will have a cosine application so they're doing the working out for you. They'll, t they'll make that correction for you. If you don't have that and you're just going for a straight, that's actually the line of sight measurement, then, then you're going to need to use a cosine system or something other to be able to do a, a equation to be able to figure it out. Your ballistic app will be able to figure it out for you, but that'll give you your elevation needed. Um, another way to do this, if you've got your area mapped out or you've got GPS coordinates, then your GPS coordinate is something that's going to get you that correct horizontal distance. That's gonna give you the horizontal distance to target, and that's the one you need. For your wind and that sort of stuff, well, that's different. It's still to go through all the wind, so your wind, your barometric pressures, all those things are still as for the laser range finder shot, or distance, I should say. For bullet drop is done by, like I said, horizontal distance. So your GPS, or if you're using a straight laser range finder without a cosine in it, or out a co cosine system, then you actually have to do the maths yourself, or with another app, to be able to get to that place. So simple thing to remember, as complicated as that might sound, the simple thing to remember is horizontal distance is what makes the difference for your, your, your shot. So once you've got enough of the actual angle to shorten it up when it comes around that segment, when it, when it shortens that shot up, that's where your bullet drop goes to because of the peculiar nature of how gravity works. Anyway guys, I hope that um, stayed on some track that makes sense. Um, well, um, thank you for checking in on us and we'll catch you next time.